Uh, we're just talking about some comics today. These comics specifically. My goal, we're definitely gonna get through these first three. If we have time, we'll get through these two. But uh, I've been these are this is kind of like a, a little bit of a mix of comics I've caught up on and recent comics I've been reading. But like I've been looking a lot at coloring. So a lot of these have interesting coloring uh, kind of methods and techniques. The only one that's a little bit off par is this guy, but I wanted to show him. Hey, thanks for the like, Terry. I appreciate it. But I want to show I wanted to show this one just because of the scale. Hope you're doing well. Um, but yeah, we'll start off with Sonata. So this is Sonata. It's by David Hine, Brian Anvilin, uh, oh boy, Jared Van Dyke. I want to say uh, this is really cool. It's two volumes, but uh, the art is insane. I'm really really fascinated by it because it's really different. It's really unique. Um, Oh my god! I'm gonna break the table. <laughs> no, we're good. But uh, so this is uh, it looks kind of it's it looks partly 3D generated, and but I'm and partly not. And it's really interesting because like uh, usually with like the 3D generated uh, graphics I've seen, it's usually one artist. Like usually, like I usually see if you're doing these models like the 3D rendering, I see the coloring being by the same artist. But this was done in like black and whites and then colored. So it's really interesting. The art's great, right? Like you can really see. So if we look in close, we can kind of see some shell shading, uh, cell, cell shading kind of style stuff with it, right? Like the bird is more 3D animated. She's, I think she's 3D animated because she's got some more like cell animation style stuff. But there's some definitely like just digital painting on top of her too. Like it's definitely a cool combination. If you look at the graphics here, definitely 3D animated there. Like you can definitely get that kind of feel for it. Um, but it's a it's a pretty cool comic. It's kind of like a feels like <sighs> Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet. Romeo and Juliet with space gods, kind of. This is the first volume, there's two. But at the end of this one, it kind of like, it's not quite that, but it's a good introduction. Uh, it's kind of that straightforward, like, two battling clans over this planet, colonies over this planet. Uh, she comes from one, they're super, like, love and nonviolence. Um, and they settled here, came to settle here. And there's these, look at the art, man. That's so dope. Look at that shit, man. Ooh, it is nice. But there's these cool fucking gods. There are these massive things that roam this planet. They remind me of like Todd McFarlane's like uh, Malbolgia. Uh, they're super 3D. Here, there's a, here's more of them, man. More, more of the gods. Here's the guy, and his his colony is like super pro violence, but you these ancient gods. And you can tell, here's where the 3D rendering really comes in. Like, you see it, like, especially in that one. See that 3D rendering in it? And it's so cool. I love it. Because then it, it meshes more with this, which looks way more, uh, just pen and ink on his face, you know? Right here? Like, on him. Way more pen and ink than this guy. But there's this cool combination of them, man. I love it. So it's pretty, str I mean, it's, uh, it's, the writing is well done. Like you can tell, like very yin and yang, and they they do the speech bubbles way too. You know who's talking. Uh, orange is the guy, and he's like pro violence. Green is the girl, she's pro life. Um, it kind of plays out kind of like it, oh my god, dude, check this out. Check that art out. Both pages, both the cover. And uh, this shit, dude, them, them coming into orbit. But uh, right, look at those cool gods. Look at that cool bird she's on, too. But these god things are just fascinating. Cool, cool stuff. I love that. How it's like coming into orbit. 3D parachutes. I, it would make sense. I totally understand why you want to do a 3D. Parachute though, to be totally honest with you, that, that, that's a pain in the ass to draw. 
Same as like a lot of stuff like this. But it wasn't colored. Somebody went through and colored it differently. And it's so fascinating. I love it. Good hold here. I like the hold on the, these three candles. Hold, hold, hold. It's good. It's good. Uh, let me get a little bit further. But uh, oh yeah, here we go. This is this is, wanted to get to these guys. These guys are like the alien race that uh, are native to this planet, and uh, they're kind of they're they they they're not violent towards the new settlers. Look at that village, man. There's just so much cool here. Let's see if I can focus it a little bit more. So much cool architecture and shit in there. And it's more of that 3D, but I really, look at the bird's wings, dude. Look at that. That beautiful texture there, dude. I don't mind it. But then you get, like, this is very pen and ink. I would say the strokes on him are super pen and ink rather than that, that uh, 3D drawing. Oh. Uh, but yeah. So it's like they get trapped in this cave, and the cave is magical. And it's off, supposedly off limits to, yeah, here we go. They accidentally, they, the two clans are kind of prepping for civil, or colonies are kind of prepping for civil war. But the girl, the alien native translator and the guy all get kind of, oh man, look at that cover. That's another beautiful cover. They get trapped in these ruins and the story really unfolds from there. It's like, it, it's pretty predictable, but like, uh. Everything's all connected. It's an awesome story, and if you love this art, dude, there's more than one god too, and that's what I love. Like if you watch like monster movies where they have like things something like this, you usually you would get one cool god concept. Well, okay, we're gonna use uh shit that movie that not movie that web series that just came out, not web series Netflix series Sweet Home, the Korean the K drama with the horror it was like they had maybe three different monsters total they've got like seven seven at least seven i think there's more but seven different god character types like and they're each unique it's not just like one and they kind of gave up it's like they had a plethora of these which is super super cool sorry give me a sec just checking something uh, but uh, yeah, so if 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 you like cool art and and, and you're you're this is also for people who are like kind of touchy on the 3D digital art and they want to give it a shot and like see if it actually is worth it any good. Dip start dipping your toes with this because this is what's really started to warm me up towards 3 3D model ish because this is a great blend. But uh, yeah. This is, I don't want to go too further. I mean, it's you, you see this, and this is mostly kind of how the rest of the comic book works. But it's, I think it's really cool. I love it. Um, and the reason why, here, we're going to flip to the back. Uh, I'm going to here, make sure I don't, because I don't want to give you guys a spoiler. But yeah, so this is the early concept pages, and this is what really kind of blew my mind. Uh, different kind of rendering style towards the, uh, completed finish pages that are printed here but if you go in and look especially like uh, on these areas these there's oh, gray tone that's 3d rendered so like like if you look at so her face again could be illustration or 3d rendered but the material on her neck right here that's definitely a 3D rendered material that they then uh, threw a layer on of uh, black and white, you know? But then they go through, and this colorist, I don't know how the colorist colors this, dude, because it's like, how do you not wreck the uh, illusion of three-dimensionality, right? Look at, look at this bird. Great. That bird's definitely a 3D model. There's a few 3D models in there. But you hand it off to the painter and they keep it looking that same way. 
Like I'd be so scared to lose the, the depth and how much detail and like precise rendering is already in it. And when I color it, I'm like, oh my god, I don't want to mess up the opaqueness. But the the color has changed a lot too. Like if you look in the backgrounds, they changed a, a lot of those ink lines. So just a super super interesting. Uh, shall we say division of labor in this comic book but i loved it dude i i'm, I'm a big fan uh they're coming out with another one too so i think there's only two volumes of this because you know, this same exact team is getting ready to come out with another comic book series i think like this month uh but it's like an air space arrow arrow flynn arrow flynn i can't remember his name but uh yeah these guys, science fiction is their niche for sure. Like it definitely, the next the next story they're telling definitely falls in the same kind of category. Uh, I think I'm gonna stay with this one. I don't think there's insane, cool, crazy space gods in the next uh, series. So I get all the cool art in this series plus insane, crazy space gods. <laughs> uh, let's go on to the next one. Uh, this is Bruce Lee. So this is really cool. Uh, I actually really, really enjoy this comic book. And again, it kind of really fits in with that whole coloring mentality motif that we're, we're going with. Uh, the reason why is, uh, so this is a kid's comic. Uh, it's pr printed by Humanoids, but it's their Humanoids kid imprint. Maybe they say a couple F-bombs in here. I can't remember. Let's let's double check the age. 13 and up. There's a little bit of language. It's not bad at all. But uh, So Bruce Lee is... Uh, Way the Dragon Boy. This is pretty much like a Disney movie in comic book form. Uh, the first first volume or two, I'm not totally sure. I can't remember if there's two or three volumes in this. Hey, thanks for like, Allison. Hope the family's doing well. Um, but the uh, the first two three volumes of this are hand painted. So this is a hand painted comic for the most part, and then. And yeah, it legit looks like a straight up here. We're gonna bring this a little bit closer. A Disney uh looks like a Disney film, man. It's so rad. Oh uh, yeah, dude, I agree, Dustin, man. It's and it's uh story's cool too. Uh there's animals, like anthropomorphic animals and people, and they kind of live separately. But like uh this dude finds a baby uh, an egg that comes out of the mine so this is a huge mine and he's there working um, and pretty much it's just about this boy's life like this is a, a year here we go this is a freaking awesome looking painting like straight up dude that's totally a Walt Disney film man check that scene out it's so good uh, but uh, yeah, it's more about uh, this boy. He's a half, half animal, half, uh, half human, and you can kind of guess by the title what animal he is half of. But uh, yeah, it's a cool, like I think two volume story. But let's get, yeah, man, I love his scenes, dude. Those are two great shots right there. Wow. Ah. Beautiful color, and that's all pan painted. That's like either acrylic or gouache. I think this is probably acrylic. Uh, the way I can tell is if you look really closely at the corners, you can tell where the paint, like the painter's tape, got ripped off and stuff. Like you can't cheat that digitally. But then when they, <laughs> there he is, Bruce Lee the Conqueror. That's what he kept calling himself. But uh, <laughs> it's pretty dope. Um, once he goes digital the the panel borders become straight clean lines and it's like you can tell a little bit but yeah <laughs> this dude's got a tuck and uh it's it's actually not the bunny for a while it is the bunny but you turn out it turns out it's a talking flea that's this amazing singer but she's got a bit of an attitude <laughs> this guy's a hustler so they got some good characters in it it's pretty uh pretty hilarious um but yeah, it's about like there's things, strange things going on in the mind, and that's kind of this first volume is about uh, him finding out, stopping the things going on in the mind, and 
the second volume is kind of like him figuring out who his parents are. It's a great story, but <laughs> ah, wow, wow, right? It's a great kids comic. You want to get kids like <laughs> a little like again? It says thirteen and up somewhere around there, ten and thirteen. If you're interested in getting them in comics, this is not a bad one. But also, if you like Disney movies, this is a Disney movie, just straight up uh, animated. So I love it. I love the. Physics. I mean, it's a master. <laughs> here's the here's the uh, wolves. They're the bad guys. I, dude, just look at that reaction. That just is just the funniest thing ever. I want to get this level of animation uh, into uh, into my comics. It's fantabulous. Um, oh, and, and then you get this one too. This shot of them. It's great stuff, man. Yeah, so do yourself a favor, check it out if you're interested in it. Can't go wrong, you know. Again, super big plus for Disney fans. But that's Bruce Lee, Wave the Dragon Boy. Loved it, loved it, loved it. Oh, here, let me show you the digital. Without spoiling the story, let's show you the digital painting. I'll flip to a digital page. Oh, this is perfect. So I'm going to flip to a digital page and then a fully painted page. And we'll see if you guys. Oh, here I know which one. Can I show you that one? Is it? Uh, it's not too far in, but here we'll go here. Not to spoil it, because that's a really cool scene. But uh, come on, whoop. Well, you may have just seen it in a. So like, yeah, this is is uh, the hand hand painted. It's what you guys have been seeing. Uh, and then this is the digital, and you can kind of definitely see it in this page. I need to get the layer out of it. Um, especially in him through here. The shadows or the delineation of shadows and color got smoothed out a little bit. It's a little bit rougher in those first pages. But again, it's still pretty faithful to. Uh, it's a pretty good page. It's still pretty faithful to. The, the, the painted, hand painted. It still looks like a Disney movie, which is rad. So, yeah, grab this. I think anybody would enjoy this one, to be honest. Uh, it, does take a, it does take a little while to get through just because there is, there's a lot of, I mean, it's usually 10 panels per page. Okay, maybe eight. Eight panels per page is still a hefty number. Yeah, eight, eight panels per page is about the number you're looking at. And that, uh, because there's a lot of dialogue. It's good dialogue. Very good look. Very good dialogue, but there's a significant amount of it. So, yeah, it's pretty funny, though. It's funny, funny story. Uh, next one, next one. This is for people who are uh, fans of, like, uh, I'd say, like, Firefly. 100%. If you're a fan of Firefly, you should check out Worship Jolly Roger. Uh, it's by Montlow and Runberg. Runberg? I don't know. I don't know. I'm sorry. I am... American and I butcher every name possible, but uh, yeah, it's like I said, fans of Fire Firefly. Uh, it's a beautifully, beautifully colored um, comic book. I was following these guys like in the Tumblr days when Tumblr was not censored at all. Uh, they were on it, but uh, I mean, it's really cool. As we get into it, you'll see what it's 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 colored. It's digitally colored. It's not. There we go. It's not really your traditional comic book line art. Again, it's kind of like animation, and that's kind of what I want to get closer to my comic style for looking like. More finished, complete art. Oh, man, that's rad. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, can you guys hear me when it's like this? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can still hear me. Um, but it's about these escaped prisoners led by a disgraced former captain. This guy. But turns out he got blackmailed. He got set up. Uh, kind of think like a running man, a la running man style set up. But uh, now he's, got, he, he's, he's, he's free. He's got nothing left to live for, so he's just getting revenge. He's, he's tracking down the guy who did this to him. Happens to be like the, the commander of 
of the army or like space fleet, you know, almost like or or president. I don't know. He's really high up there, really high up there. Uh, but uh, I I would say the story. Oh man, look at that. The story, the writing is sharp. Like uh, it's straightforward. Like it's 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 writing similar to Sonata, so it's clean. You know, this writer knows how to tell a story. They know what they know what beats to hit. So if you want good story writing, but yeah, both Sonata and Jolly Roger are very straightforward stories that really let the artists kind of sing. You know, they did. I mean, they may have made it difficult for the artists, but at the same time, I feel like they didn't to write it. Like at least. Clean cut, you know, but in a, in a, in a, in a good way. <laughs> but I, I mean, I love that scene. That's all like, uh, there's not many black lines on that. There's not many older lines. That's more just digitally painted above the explosion. I'd already showed that, but like, uh, especially there. Reminds me of that, uh, the book Object, Object by Kelly and Amy. Uh, very similar to that. So yeah, that's the guy who set him up. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, if you want a story like that, and, and his crew is pretty cool. One of them is a bit of a raging killer, uh, and I think we'll, we'll, he'll, he'll, there's the second volume, and I think it's just two volumes. But uh, yeah, this guy's a bit of a homicidal maniac. I feel, I feel like kind of locked down. He hasn't, ki he's killed somebody already, but he hasn't, he hasn't got on his spree yet. But I think he will. Uh, and then this kid's like, uh, he's, uh, he's tell it telekinetic he can move shit with his mind shall we say and he has this owl that he controls that just murks people love that space panel right there uh and she's i think she's yeah she's a mechanic and she just gets blackmailed into working with them but uh yeah the first volume the whole premise of the first volume is and I haven't started the second one. I just really want to show you guys this art into that. Is they all are gonna go steal the warship Jolly Roger? So that's kind of like <laughs> what it's what the first part's about. Is they're just man, look at that art though. That's dope. I love it. So they're gonna go steal that. You can, you can, I mean, you can stare at this for days and then for days. The cool thing is, like, uh, I'm pretty sure I know what exact uh, brush he's using using to get a lot of these cool strokes. So here we'll go. Ah. Let me show you the cool. That was not a good noise that that book just made. <laughs> Went too far. There we go, we're getting closer, getting closer. There we go, so this guy. Not a spoiler, because again, they're going after it. You kind of know they're going to do that. The painting on this? I know the pen that he's using to get a lot of these strokes. I use it a lot, too, in my digital art. So it's kind of cool being able to see what he's using. Especially with stuff like in here. Like, you can see this painting. Uh, he's, it's mostly just one brush, but or one brush type. It looks like maybe a couple, but most of it is different textures created with a, a certain brush in Photoshop that I used here. Yeah, like creating this stuff, like the, those trees in the background. Pretty rad. I love it. I mean, if you're enticed by any of this art and you like Firefly, pick it up, my dudes. Pick it up. Worship Jolly Roger. There's only two volumes, so it's a pretty short series too. You don't have to get super committed. I think there's only two. There's only two so far, they say. But I think this came oh this came out a while ago. So I think we're good. Um next one. Alright, so again, here's this one isn't much for the color. This is more for the scope and scale that I was looking at last time we looked at comics. I just didn't have time to get to it. I wanted to show it to you because it's really cool. Uh warning. Nudity, violence, I think. Uh, <laughs> we may have to skip through some parts. But uh, I think the art's pretty cool. I dig the art style. Uh, very rough, very uh, concept arty, you know? 
kind of stuff like that. You can see here. Um, here, we're gonna let me just flip through some pages, make sure we don't catch anything. But he has a very large scale. It reminds me of, uh, I mean, just the epics, you know, the epics of yesteryear, but also like Warhammer, Philip Dreye, shit like that. But I do enjoy it. This is a big page. This is cool. Um, you know, you, you, you see here, you get the, uh, very concept arty, you know. If you've played the the video game, like any video game, like I think Diablo, World of Warcraft comes to mind. Yeah, if you like uh, if you like World of War like that stuff, I keep saying World of Warcraft because of the fantasy, but it's really good art. You know, definitely all done digitally. I don't think there's much pencil. I'm gonna show pencil work done before, but you got your big throne room. It's pretty cool. The story was meh, and I think it's just because, like, from what I understand, I haven't read any uh, Alaric, but from what I understand, um, three stories got, kind of got condensed into one for this. But uh, the art's just insane, man. It's cool. It's very. They're, they're, he's the king of this like torture torture elves essentially dark torture elves but uh, he's a pretty big badass but you get some awesome art in it so yeah they get into a battle scene here oh look at this scene that's dope I love that let's get a close up of that man look at that work that's dope uh, when I look at it now, I see a lot of James Stokey in it, but I know, like, I don't think that had much influence, but similar digital coloring with the white specks and uh, just everything else. Yeah, yeah, because he goes to war, and they, they have some amazing war scenes in this. Like, you just get these big, sprawling panels. They're just, he got his army, and they're just getting ready to go off into the sunset to go fight. Viking photos. I mean, it's all just badass, dude. If you want fantasy reference, get this book. It's tr I mean, the entire like I think it's it's more of concept art <laughs> than a comic book, but it's told sequentially. And that's just a that's just a tip in my hat to the artists who did this book because it's view vi visually visually. You know, Legacy of Kane, maybe, Soul Reaver, stuff like that, if you're a fan of. Digitally great. Love it. It's dope. Definitely has his own style of faces. Like, I can tell this guy's at work whenever I see his faces. Never mind, different guy. But, like, his, he, they've got the, uh, what I was trying to say, is they have the, um... The same face structure. So he he he's developed like you can see it in here. These two different guys. He's developed his own skull. Like he definitely has his own skull shape that he bases most of his skulls and uh, more specifically facial structure off of, which isn't bad. It means he has his own language. So that's dope. Or they. I don't know who, how the again. I don't know how the art responsibilities were divvied up. I think they say in the back. But I'm just a little bit lazy right now, so I'm not gonna check. But yeah, do yourself a favor. If you like the, if you want like a comic book full of fantasy concept art, this is where it's at. There's also a second one too. I don't know. It, it, if you like the Elric stories, you may like these. I don't know, with a consent story, but like, don't go, don't go searching for the second one. If you thought, unless you're like a big Elric fan, because you get the first one, you get the the dope dope art, and and the story's like, okay. so they're just my thoughts. But if you are super into it, get the second one, or at least get this one. Get one or two of them for that art. And see this art in real life because it's ow every gosh dang time. That's okay. All right, last book.
this book is a bit of madness. Uh, this is more. This is a fully painted book, so this is, I'm pretty excited to show you guys this one. But this is for fan, definitely for fans of like Lord of the Rings. If you like Lord of the Rings, this book like literally could fit in it, but like not, not like not in a. I'm just riding off the coattails of Lord of the Rings. This is a amazing in its own way fantasy story that could just happen to be set in the Lord of the Rings. If you get what I'm saying, but it's a bit of madness. Holy oh, painted. Uh, I've gotten through the first volume, and this is so cool. They do kind of like a, this chess board, the chess characters, chess thing of all the characters who are playing. It's kind of a cool idea. So you, you can get kind of like introduced to all the heavy hitters of the story before you even flip it in, uh, especially with a story that has more characters. Like, if you lose track, you can always come back to this just to see who's who and what's going on. It's a great idea to have. I'm definitely going to be throwing it in my comic book as well. You know, because these aren't necessarily established characters either. These are... Look at that painting, man. And then this whole comic is just going to be amazing, amazing painting. Uh, but... Uh, there we go. It, it's... The first volume, which is as, as, as far as I've gone, because I just... It's taken me a while to soak these pages in. Cause look at these pages, man. They're breathtaking. Um, it's it's just astonishing. But uh, the first volume is like this this I'd say gnome almost. A gook is sent. This is a gook. Um, he's sent to go to the queen, or he's called on by the queen. And the first volume is just his journey getting to the queen and, and so that's what really reminds me of that uh lord of the Rings stuff uh but he meets a lot of people on the way but the art is so cool and some, some of that art that you have to like you have to really look close into the panels to see everything but the villain this this upcoming villain dude this whole scene where the villain just invades this town is so cool. It's such a throwback to the uh, the ring raids too. Again, it's a very, very cool. Uh, yeah, man. Here we go. Very cool fantasy story, right here. Where's my? Let's get closer so you guys can really see the art. Mad villain. Mad villain's got some magic, though. I'll tell you what. Shocks the hell out of this dude. I'm pretty sure he's the king, if I can remember correctly. Uh, but it's so cool, dude. It's, it's, uh, airbrush. <laughs> these goblins. Check out these goblins. And, like, Magic the Gathering, too. If you like the Magic the Gathering card game, pick this up as well. Like, old school fantasy, you know? The other book, uh, Elric isn't quite old school fantasy. <laughs> it it, it kind of is, but it's like not just the straightforward sword and sorcery tale. But yeah, and 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 they get uh, you meet a lot of different kind of normal characters that you would. You got fairies. Fairy kind of shoots down. Um, you got the, these gnomes, and so many times in this comic book, it's really cool. The characters really disappear into the landscape. Let me see if there's a good. Well, here I'll I'll I'll, I'll kind of I'll try to use this this panel as an example. You, you see it'll happen a lot throughout the comic, but this is a landscape. That little bump right there, that's the main character. And it happens throughout this whole book. The main characters are just hidden in these beautiful landscapes. Uh, it's it's great, man. It's really good stuff. So meets a troll. If you like that, if you like Hobbit, if you like Lord of the Rings, you meet some mushroom people. <laughs> it's really it's really pretty lighthearted, pretty funny. Um, 
do you some favor and check this book out. Uh, I'm excited to get through this because, I mean, it's a bit of a chunker. So it's about that thick. I mean, I'd say about 200, at least around 250, probably. Around 250 pages, I'd say. But uh, three volumes were in it? Four. four. So there's four volumes. I've read through the first volume, but I just want to show you that art. It's so badass. The story's great. Uh, yeah, check it out. A bit of madness. That's it for the day. We got through all the comics. I don't know how long this video was. But uh, yeah, let's throw them all back out there so you guys can see what we went through. Hope you enjoyed seeing these comics written. We'll flip through these comics as much as I did. Uh, I love looking at these. I always get something out of them. It's super rad. But those are the red books we read. Sonata, Bruce Lee, John Lee Roger, Elric, and a bit of Mathis. Yeah, thanks for uh, watching, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time. Later.